welcome to my weekly blog and it's another living and learning series today um, and that's really because there is um, not a lot to report to be totally honest um, so I want to talk about something very very sort of general which is why I you know it's one of those things that I can bring out on a week like this where not a lot has happened um, and I want to talk about um, what I call the great questionings a applicable to all uh, humans um, and the ideals of life I think can probably be summed up um, in in two ways um, the first way is um, a tad Nietzschean in fact um, and that is that uh, anybody who um, lives um, even before the age of accountability uh, will discover that life is full of barriers that need to be overcome um, in a sort of uh, mission to get from uh, where you've began uh, to uh, where you can possibly uh, be. Um, this is his ideal of what's known as the becoming which is just to reach one's potential basically uh, I think the other way um, of thinking uh, of life that can possibly be applied to um, every single person is that it's um, uh, a bit of a, an adventure um, or rather that that, uh, that the set of um, obstacles which we overcome can also be seen as a sort of journey of adventure um, uh, again with sort of going from where you've been to, to where you end up. Um, to help myself, because you know that I have uh, a great archive, um, <laughs> to help myself I sort of split my life into um, seasons um, and different seasons have different names and uh, the, the seasons are uh, a period of relative sort of stability living under a certain paradigm and then something will happen which will shake my world view you know in, in that portion of, of, of uh, chronology and uh, what emerges will be a new um, a new season uh, where I think slightly different where my perhaps my views are slightly different and sometimes the changing of seasons uh, is as is as sort of subtle and as um, simple as simply moving house um, or moving, you know, moving perhaps from um, Lincoln to, to Harrogate or something like that. It can be completely circumstantial um, and other times it's formed by circumstances which have an incredibly deep impact um, on my life and uh, change things substantially uh, you know across the whole board because basically there's there's three different me's if you like there's the there's the 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 academic and the um, the employment me uh, there's the um, spiritual me um, and there's everything else the family me I suppose which is me outside of uh, work and school <laughs> and outside of anything sort of spiritual and um, occasionally uh, you get you know things that will dominate um, across the board and throw into co into question everything that you uh, you believe those tend to be um, about uh, spiritual things um, and uh, so it's not surprising to to find out that the the questionings are re basically um, uh, periods of time within my spiritual growth. And there are two questions and they bring me from uh, the state of being brought up a Christian to actually being a Christian under my own steam, so to speak. And I think the, the, the difference between that period of time um, is gosh maybe five years something like that and the first great questioning um, can be simplified and I do mean it is it is simplified uh, to the question um, is there a God um, and is there an afterlife that's that's the the main um, crux of it uh, and the second questioning was basically 
Um, having decided there is a God, uh, do I think that he wants anything to do with me? Um, that was the second questioning. Now the reason I sort of bring this up now is because the first and second questionings both started in uh, around this time, in the fourth quarter of their respective years. Um, 1997 uh, was the start of the first questioning um, and I also bring it up because um, this, this week in fact uh, my, uh, my nan um, has celebrated her um, wedding anniversary to my grandfather and it was his death that sparked this first um, questioning and that was because I had always relied on what I'd been told um, and, and never really had to challenge it. Um, this was the first time that I'd ever encountered uh, a death within the family and um, it was at that age where I was actually old enough to understand what was going on um, and records, I mean my, my journal was already in its second year um, and I encountered this, this, pr this problem where I believed you know there was an afterlife and um, all that sort of stuff and yet I was confronted with the finality of what looked to me like um, a, a death a person I loved who I'd never ever see again um, and it took me uh, a year each of these questionings in, in fact take about a year um, to uh, to work themselves out and during that year I uh, absolutely smashed up um, an area of wasteland and I developed it into a uh, very prolific in fact um, a, a garden which was growing vegetables, vegetable patch, which I'm doing again for the first time this year um, since I stopped doing that. And that really was a metaphor because between the sort of uh, um, September and the December of that year I was basically destroying everything that I had um, taken as being uh, true because I'd just been told it and re-examining it and in the latter half of the year from February onwards when I was sort of planting out my first year's crop and watching it grow um, and also meditating in fact on, on a, I was given a meditations tape on Psalm 130 and I was using that quite a lot and by the time harvest had um, occurred uh, I had pretty much answered the the question and that was that yes actually um, I did for myself um, believe there was a God and believe there was an afterlife as well and things were stable uh, uh, between then um, and 2000 when the uh, the second questioning hit and uh, this was because I had gone along to what was quite big at the time um, and it was called uh, the are you seeing double of me? I'm not quite sure. I don't know if you're seeing me properly or not, but there we are. Um, never mind, if I'm just a blur, don't worry too much about it. Uh, yes, what was I doing? What was I saying? Oh yes, um, the second questioning. So I, had, I was at university and I was living away from home for the first time, feeling quite isolated, and I went along to uh, what was called um, the Alpha Course, which was a, a, a big, big uh, missionary tool in the Church of England that hit around the turn of the century. And I went along, um, uh, it was supposed to be like an introduction to, to Christianity, but obviously I was already a Christian and I was going along prim primarily because they did free meals. And you get eventually to the, the climax of this, um, this set of uh, um, meetings where you watch a video uh, by the Reverend Humble Gumble, as we called him, um, and then you discussed afterwards uh, having had tea. Um, and you get to the end of the series where there's, a way, uh, there's an away weekend and you're supposed to go away. Uh, and that is the series that, uh, that talks about and reflects on um, a, a Pentecostal practice, really, of being slain in the spirit. And... Um, you know, I was in the room when everybody else was affected and I wasn't. And I know that sounds incredibly selfish, but it just suddenly made me think, what is wrong with me 
um, and it it started me thinking, um, you know, if if I do believe in God and yet He doesn't sort of interact with me, um, what is the problem? Uh, and I had by that point many many things. Um, Many, many issues that I was struggling with that I thought could have a spiritual forbearance on uh, the negative side of that. You know, there were plenty of reasons why, um, you know, if I were God, I, I, I might not want to have any, uh, <laughs> any particular interaction with me. Um, and this went on for a very, very long time. And it ended um, again about a year later when... Uh, when I um, had, uh, well, I was sort of given a sign. It's a bit weird. Um, the same Bible verses kept coming up time and time again. And on one particular Sunday morning, and I have to say, I'm not trying to convince anybody um, of anything by saying this. So if you don't, if you think that what I'm saying is 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 absolute crap, well, that's that's you know, you're up to you. I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. But this was a spiritual development for me, um, and that was that we had been uh, discussing this Bible verse, which kept coming up time and time again from Deuteronomy, about uh, the passage where having the law has been given, and finally Moses says, sort of on behalf of God, that you have been given the law, and you either choose to keep it, or you choose to reject, reject it. Um, you know, the choice is yours. Something along the lines of, you know, all all nature has recognised that I have given you this law um, and either you choose life or you don't. Um, it's completely up to you. And uh, I remember we talking about this, you know, time and time again. And I was saying, well, it doesn't matter if you choose life because, you know, if you if you don't get the interaction, um, you know, what's what's going on here? Uh, and we went in to a service at um, the church that we were at at that point in time. And um, this lady in front just happened to be sitting uh, with um, this Bible verse printed on the back of her um, her jumper. And she was there, you know, all uh, all the way through the service. And I remember when we left, uh, my, my mother really sort of saying, well, what more can what what other sign are you expecting? You know, this thing has come up time and time and time and time again. Um, you're actually deliberately ignoring it if you don't recognise that this is far, far more than coincidence. Um, and so I guess I thought, well, yes, maybe she's right. And I have to say that uh, my spiritual life, in terms of progression from that, um, you know, it was not quick at all. It was not fast. And thing, things didn't particularly change overnight after that. But I had then accepted, OK, there was a God there is an afterlife and it has something to do with a, a, a relationship as well between me and him. And things then progressed from there slowly over the years. 